Hello everyone, this is Rajak Chanjala. I am an educator at An Academy and you can follow me on An Academy Learning Gap where you can find more courses as well. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the simple gate trends, which is a very important topic for the gate examination. And please rate, review and share the video and also subscribe to An Academy YouTube channel. Welcome again to Simple Gate Trends. We knew that gates are the mechanical elements which are used to transmit the motion and power, right? For this purpose, we have to connect the gates of one shaft to the gear of another shaft, right? What we are actually doing is that we are transmitting the motion and the power from one point of the mechanism to the another point of the mechanism, okay? So in some applications, you can see two or more gates are made to mesh with each other to transmit the power from one shaft to another shaft. So such a combination is called as the gate train or train or tooth wheels, okay? A gate train consists of two or more gates transmitting power from one from the driving shaft to the driven shaft where the driving shaft is the one where the motion actually starts and the driven shaft which follows the driving shaft or which is connected to the driving shaft okay so here we have the types of gate trains we have simple gate train compound gate train and the reverted gate train and also we have the epicyclic gate train so among these four the first three types of the gate trains have to transmit the motion in between the shafts which have the axis fixed relative to each other okay where while transmitting the motion in between the shaft the axis of the shafts are fixed relative to each other means the shaft's axis is not going to be changed with respect to the position with the other shafts in that gate train okay so for the case of epicyclic gate trains the axis of the shafts on which the gears are mounted may move relative to a fixed axis. So for this, which is a epicyclic gate train, the mechanism is different, okay, where the shaft's axis can be moved relative to a fixed axis, okay. So in, a, in the later chapters, we are going to discuss about the epicyclic gate trains. Now in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the, the first gate train type that is simple gate train type. So let us start our discussion. Here we have the simple gate train. When there is only one gear on each shaft, as shown in the figure, in this figure, and this mechanism for the transmission of power and motion is called a simple gate train. So the gears are represented by their pitch circle. So see in this figure, the gears, the view of the gate train can be seen with the help of their the pitch circle. So here you can see this is the pitch circle of the driving gear, and this is the pitch circle of the the driven or the follower gear. Okay. So as you can observe here, the drive driver gear has the motion in clockwise direction and the follower or the driven gear has the motion which is in anti-clockwise direction okay so this is the the change in the motion of the direction of the gears which are connected to each other okay so as you can see in this figure the shafts of the the axis of the shafts of these the simple gear, gear train system are parallel to each other right so this schematic tells us what is a simple gate train. So let's discuss about the, the relation between the speed of the gear and the number of teeth present on the gears of the simple gate train system. Okay. Let N1 equals the speed of gear 1 which is a driver gear and N2 is the speed of gear 2 which is a driven or the follower gear in RPM rotations per minute. Okay. Where T1 is the, the number of teeth on gear 1 and T2 is the number of teeth on gear 2. So now we are going to find the relation between the these four terms which are the speeds and the number of teeth of the two gates which are meeting with each other in the simple gate train system okay so let's see so before going to discuss about the relation between those terms we have to know some terms which are used in the in our discussion okay here we have speed ratio and the train value which are the useful measures for the gate trains so the speed ratio of gate train is the ratio of the speed of the driver to the speed of the driven or follower and the ratio of speeds of any pair of gates in mesh in mesh is the inverse of their number of teeth therefore we can say speed ratio equals to n1 by n2 and the tooth will be the ratio of tooth will be inverse to this one right therefore n1 by n2 equals to t2 by t1 okay so with the help of this we can see n and t are inversely related okay this value is called as the speed ratio it may be the ratio of the the speeds of drive one to the driven or the ratio of the teeth of drive one to the driven 
Next we have the ratio of the speeds of the drive and our follower to the speed of the driver is known as a train value which is inverse to the speed ratio. Okay, so it can be written as train value equals to n2 by n1 equals to t1 by t2. So speed ratio is the inverse of train value and if the distance between the two gears is large the motion from one gear to another gear can be transmitted by either of the following two methods here we have the method one we have to use the large size gears or we have to provide a intermediate gears to transmit the motion in between the one gear to the another gear where the distance between the two gears is very large okay as you can observe from these two conditions that the manufacturing of the larger gear is not going to be economical and it is not convenient for the space limitations right so for providing one or more intermediate gear is very convenient and economical so more in most of the applications we use intermediate gears in between the the driven and the driven to transmit the motion between the uh, the shafts which have the relatively large distance okay so so if we have the n number of intermediate gears in between the two to the driven and the driven if the number n which is the number of the intermediate gears is odd the motion of the both gears the driver and the driven or follower is like which means here you can see in this figure you can see he we have a one intermediate gear right which is a odd number therefore the driver and the driven has the same direction which is called as like directions okay so this system where the intermediate gears number is odd is called as a like system where the direction of the motion of the driver and the driven gears is same so if we have even number of intermediate gears in between the driver and the driven the motion is going to be unlike which means the motion of the driven is opposite to the motion of the the driver gear okay so this is the the effect of the intermediate gears in between the driver and the driven gears if we have odd number of intermediate gears the motion is like where the the direction of motion of the driver and the driven is same if we have even number of uh, intermediate gears the motion is going to be opposite okay so let us uh, find the relation between the speed and the number of tooth of the driver and the driven gears when we have int some number of intermediate gears okay so consider here here we have a the simple gear train where we have one intermediate gear so let's consider n1 is the speed of driver n2 is the speed of the intermediate gear and n3 is the, the speed of the driven or follower and t1 t2 t3 are the number of teeth on driver intermediate gear and the follower okay so we can find the relation between the speeds and the the number of teeth on the driver and the intermediate gear where we have n1 by n2 equals to t2 by t1 because these two are the mating gears right so we can find the the speed ratio which is same as that this one okay similarly we can find the relation between the speed and the number of tooth in between the these two mating gears which is an intermediate gear and the driven or the follower gear so for this we have the speed ratio equals to n2 by n3 equals to t3 by t1 so on multiplying these two equations which are the speed ratios of the, these two gears and the speed ratio of these two gears okay so for this n1 by n2 into n2 by n3 equals to t2 by t1 into t3 by t2 on cancelling out the terms we have got n1 by n3 equals to t3 by t1 as you can see here we don't have any parameters of the intermediate gear that is n2 or t3 right so as you can observe we just have found the relation between the driver and the driven parameters gate parameters okay so the speed ratio and the train value in a simple train gear is independent of the size and number of intermediate gears as you can see in this relation the speed ratio or the train value we don't have any terms which are for the intermediate gears so these are these values are independent of the the size and the number of teeth on the intermediate gates so these intermediate gates are called ideal gates as they do not affect the speed ratio or the train value of the system of the gate trains okay so with this analysis we have found this condition that the motion speed ratio 
train value as are not going to be affected by the intermediate gates what is happening is that the the direction of motion of the driven and the driven gates is going to be changed according to the number of intermediate gates present in the in between the space in between the space of uh, the driver and the driven gates okay so this is the condition that we have got from this analysis thank you